The Seattle Kraken lost to the Tampa Bay Lightning. There was a really weird play in the crease. Your boy boy, Callie Yarncroak, played his last game as a member of the Seattle Kraken, and we hardly got to say goodbye. But we did maybe say goodbye to Geo. All that and more coming up on this episode of Locked on Kraken. All that and more coming up on this episode of Locked on Kraken. You are Locked on Kraken. Your daily podcast on the Seattle Kraken. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. We are the Seattle Kraken. Hey, hey, what do you say, Seattle hockey fans? Eric Lindsay Ayala, as always, thank you for making Locked on Kraken one of your podcast listens throughout the day. I am your host again of Locked on Kraken, and uh, yesterday we had a game. It was a weird game, kind of ended the way we expected with Tampa Bay coming out on top, um, but it was a weird game because Gio, there was a great celebration for Gio. He warmed up, but was a healthy scratch. We know that He's getting ready to get the boot, um, or at least all signs point to yes there. We did see that Keller Yarncroke got dealt before the game even started in Tampa Bay. And, um, yeah, that scrum, I can't show you the video. I wish I could because it was wild. I was actually listening to this um, game on the radio, so Everett Fitzhugh doing a great job. And I heard that call, you know, I was like cooking or something. And I heard the call and I was like, wait, what happened? What happened? And then I saw the video on social media. I'll link that so you can take a look if you'd like. But um, what a wild, like, Grubauer slides out of net, and then you had Colin Blackwell playing goalie for a little bit. He made at least two saves. I mean, a solid two saves. Then Gruby slides back into the frame, and Tampa Bay got that goal. Uh, Dave Haxtell and a few of the guys saying that it was such a weird situation and kind of really got the momentum shifted for Tampa Bay. But again, it was a 4-1 victory for the Tampa Bay Lightning. What we can say is that although Yanni Gord and the Seattle Kraken got blanked, by Tampa Bay the last time they played. Talked about that on yesterday's show. Yanni Gord gets the opening goal in this game, not for the Tampa Bay Lightning, but for the Seattle Kraken. Got it at the 238 mark. Early power plays for the Seattle Kraken. So they were um, drawing penalties. But then Nikita Kucherov gets his 11th at the 626 uh, mark of the first period. That's how we would close it out even And then it was three unanswered goals by the Tampa Bay Lightning. Victor Hedman on the bookends there, his 16th and 17th goals respectively. And Anthony Cirelli somewhere in the middle. Um, All right, so let me take you over first to um, post-game. You're going to hear Dave Haxtell kind of talk about that scrum play. And uh, I believe we also got... Everly. And so you'll hear from Everly after that. What's it like trying to manage so many, many moving pieces and you're coaching a game? One piece at a time. It's, uh, the game is, you know, the game obviously is primary. There's, you know, hey, there's, there's the human element to it is, is part of it, but everybody's part of this business. So, um, you know, there's a lot of care for, obviously a lot of care for, for, uh, for Yarny as a teammate, as, you know, as a guy inside of that dressing room. Um, you know, and he's, he carries a ton of respect. So, um, you know, in, in no way is there, you know, no, there's no way to, nor would you want to minimize that. Um, you know, and obviously, you know, in, in, you know, in Gio's situation, an awful lot of emotion there, uh, first off for, for the occasion, for, for he and his family. And then, you know, obviously uh, being held out of the lineup um, again. You know, that's the, that's the fine line. Uh, between uh, the business side of this uh, and, and the human element of it, and and as you turn your, you know, you turn the page to uh, to the game, it's it's all about that. It's all about the game. How do you think your players were able to turn the page? It looked like it started off well, and then Tampa Bay kind of found their legs. 
Well, Tampa, I mean, Tampa's going to get their pushes. I, you know, I felt like, uh, um, you know, our game was, you know, we took too many penalties in the first 40 minutes. You know, forget about the last couple. Uh, you know, the first four in, in the first couple uh, couple of periods uh, put you into a, you know, that's a tough spot. And there was a lot of specialty teams both ways. Uh, so, you know, the flow was, you know, it was kind of a start and go, uh, stop and go. Uh, but, uh, you know, we were, you know, we, we were right there. Uh, bounce of the puck gives us a tie game after, you know, after two. Uh, but, the, you know, the critical goal, that third goal, you know, we get skated by from 200 feet and, uh, kind of uh, mass chaos in in our crease uh, is uh, is the one you know that uh, you know that puts some separation there for them. Steve, how, how would you kind of reflect on Cali's tenure with you? I know he got off to the slow start to the year, but then the last couple of months seems like he's really been a nice piece for you. Yeah, Cali is. Uh, you know, I'll try to sum it up briefly. Um, he's an outstanding two way player. Uh, he's a very well respected player in the dressing room, quietly uh, as a leader. Uh, and just, uh, um, you know, uh, absolutely no maintenance, you know, as a, as a, uh, as a player. So, uh, he's, you know, he's been a tremendous player for us. Uh, he's going to get a good opportunity, and, uh, and I believe, you know, we'll have a chance to play a good role on a, on a good team uh, as he moves forward, you know, into, uh, into the stretch run here and into the playoff. Like I just said, it's, it's part of the business. We're big boys. We know what the, uh, we know what the expectation is. This is a, a league that's uh, – based on winning it's a business that's based on winning and and uh um, when you're not doing that changes have to be made and um you have to do what's best for your organization so you know it's a at a at a personal level i mean obviously these are guys that you, you become friends with but you know we both understand um you know what it is I, I think you look at the nhl i think it's pretty rare that guy goes through their whole career without being traded so um changes are always made and they're always for the betterment of the team. So um, you always wish, wish those guys good luck. I mean, they get a chance to go play in the postseason, and um, we still have to continue to try and build here. Battles, little plays on the walls, little plays holding pucks, and, and then in practice, just execution. Come to the rink. You know, this is still a job. You know, this isn't – it's not like because we're out of it. We're um, – it's just fun now. I mean, we we're, we still expect to try and get better as a team and get better individually. I mean, you have to find something – to motivate yourself, whether it's statistics, contracts, whatever it is, just find something to motivate yourself and, and bring that because and, that's going to help your teammates. So, um, you know, we, we, we just got to find a, a better way to execute. I mean, we're, we're missing passes and we're, um, you know, getting beat by on uh, on flip pucks and, and whatever. We, we, we have to find a way to, you know, get in front of bodies and help each other out and, and, uh, and, and, and play better collectively and, and, and individually, and that's just going to help the team. I mean, you all, I feel like I say it, a handful of times, but Jordan Everly keeps it real. Like he's like, we still have a job to do. Yeah, it's hard. Trades are part of the job. Shouldn't be a surprise. Of course, personally, you get to know people, but then he's talking about like having to find ways, like find ways to be motivated just because they're out of it. Just because there's people that are going to get traded doesn't mean that the job stops. The work is the same. The work is the same. They still have a, a season to complete. And I really respect the crap out of him for, for keeping it real there. Um, just a few quick things from this Tampa game. You saw that uh, the Seattle Kraken got outshot. 42 shots on goal for the Lightning um, compared to the Kraken's 25 power plays or specialty teams. One for five were the Kraken. Obviously, Yanni Gord, only goal power play goal uh the tampa bay lightning two for six victor hedman had two power play goals um blocks favored the seattle kraken but to jordan everly's point you know really focusing in um playing individually to your highest and as a team to their highest you heard about him talking about you know a little flip pucks here and you heard Dave Haxtell talk about it too just um giving too many opportunities to a team like the Tampa Bay Lightning but the Seattle Kraken give up opportunities to every team I always think it's wild that you know there are defensive categories and I'm always I'm always asking for more analytics defensively but it's like <laughs> my interpretation of the defensive stats where the Seattle Kraken are high in defensive ranking is this team is really good on defense except for when they're not. 
I mean, that's my best summary of like th- those stats don't make any sense. This is not a great defensive overall team. I mean, anyone, when they're really good at something, they're good at it, but it's about the consistency. So if we're not looking at stats in the realm of consistency, when it comes to the Seattle Kraken, then how can we really judge this team? This is the time of year where pretty much everyone has given up on their new year's resolutions, but not you, right? Because you incorporated built bar into your new year's resolutions, especially if they were to do with fitness, energy, and just kind of maintaining a happy-go-lucky life throughout the day. And why? That's because Built Bar is packed with protein while still being delicious, covered in chocolate. You're talking about on average about 130 calories, four grams of sugar, four net carbs, and, and excuse me, and packed with 17 grams a protein. If you compare that to a candy bar, you're usually at 240 calories, 30 grams of sugar, and dozens of net carbs, but not when you go with Built Bar. You've got mint brownie, coconut, coconut almond as an example. And have you ever tried the puffs? If you haven't, you're missing out on one of Built Bar's best tasting bars, such as the Churro, coconut, marshmallow, banana, cream pie. Oh my goodness. Chef's kiss. And new for this month, a white chocolate cookies and cream. They're all delicious and there are new flavors coming out all of the time. And we want you to get on, get in on the action. So head to built.com and use promo code locked 15 for 15% off your next order of built bars. That's right. Go to built.com, use promo code locked 15 for 15% off. Happy snacking. Boy, boy, Callie Yarn Croak, as I mentioned, I played it on yesterday's episode, um, but so I'm not going to play it today, but you can see it on social media. I'll leave the link. But I did, um, you know, one of our little videos talking about the trade, um, but I'll put up the graphics for you just so you know what's happening. It's Callie Yarn Croak uh, to the Calgary Flames for a second round pick in 2022. So that's the upcoming draft for 2023, um, third round pick, and a 2024 seventh round pick. Um, now, some things to note for value back for Callie Yarn Croak, a lot of people saying they like the value, but. The second round pick is from Florida, so that's not going to be a high pick. Um, Florida has been a relatively successful team, and then you know, third and fourth, uh, third and seventh round picks. What are you getting there? Is that a piece that you use somewhere else? Um, I, I believe on one of the things I was talking about for the Locked On Podcast Network. I said you got to find ways to increase the stock. I, I was thinking more money in the bank. I don't know if you can flip any of these for money. Um, or what the market is right now for that. Um, I've read p- different places that people are kind of foregoing 2022 ra- uh, draft picks and looking more towards 2023. So they're looking ahead. They're kind of looking at the draft class and doing some estimations there. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, I'm not really sure that I'm ready yet to say if I think this is a good trade. We knew it had to happen. Another thing we're hearing is that, you know, the Seattle Kraken is likely going to be trading with teams, at least right now before the trade deadline, obviously, with teams that um, are looking to make a push. So for me, I think that they should be getting some value back. How much they're going to get at this juncture, I don't really know. Um, But anyway, let's hear from Jess Belmasto from Locked on Calgary Flames about a nice connection that your boy boy Kelly is going to have in Calgary. Brad Tree Living does it again. (laughs) I don't know how he does it, but he just got uh, Callie Yarncrock, who is Elias Lindholm's cousin, from uh, the Seattle Kraken in exchange for a second round pick in 2022 this was florida's second round pick and that was acquired during the sam bennett trade a third in 2023 and a seventh in 2024 as well as seattle retaining 50 percent yarn is a player that people are going to fall in love with because of his versatility he is a great depth player and he will he can play the wings he can play center and you know what the best part about his game is that he is a strong net front presence he brings a lot of 
you know, defensive play to his game. You know, he's not going to go out there and necessarily mean long Lucci at you, but he is going to get the job done. And he has, uh, let's see, I believe it is 26 points this season. Yes, 26 points. He has 12 goals. And you know what? For a depth player, that's really not that bad. And that is something that Calgary will benefit from. And now and in the playoffs, a nice addition to the secondary scoring. And of course, what more could you ask for than a more complete team than this? Cup or bust, baby? Cup or bust? As always, Wanna thank you for making Locked On Crack in a part of your daily routine. And as you know by now, Monday, March 21st at 3.30, Eastern time, the Locked On Fantasy Hockey is going to do a live deadline reaction show to the NHL trade deadline. You'll get all of the on-ice fantasy and betting analysis that you need from hosts Steve Roden and Flip Livingstone. So make sure you check that out, and we'll keep you updated, of course, right here on Locked On Kraken. So, um... I want to now get you ready for an exciting weekend that the Seattle Kraken are hosting. They are actually going to be hosting the Black Girl Hockey Cup Club. And I'm so I'm I'm very excited for what I'll be doing this weekend and I, I am also at the same time absolutely gutted that I will not be able to be a part of this massive event. So here's what's happening with Black Girl Hockey Club on Friday. They are doing a women's empowerment panel. Of course, it's still women's empowerment day. Uh, day, hello. It's it's women's empowerment month as part of the efforts for the National Hockey League, Women's History Month. So all of that. So um, it's going to be a. There's going to be a panel on Friday, and that's going to be at the Kraken Community Iceplex, followed by a, um, a skate. There's going to be an on-ice skate. And then on Saturday, they're going to have a pregame at Queen Anne Beer Hall. And, um, yeah, so it's the Women of Hockey panel open skate on Friday, then a pregame at Queen Anne Beer Hall with Black Girl Hockey Club, and then, of course, the Seattle Kraken host the Detroit Red Wings at Climate Pledge Arena. That's coming up this Saturday. It's going to be amazing. I'm very sad that I won't be there, but um, I will be there in spirit. So I contribute to the Black Girl Hockey Club um, with their Get Uncomfortable campaign. I've moderated a few things, including something at the end of the month. Unfortunately, no, not with the Seattle Kraken, but with another team. Um, And uh, I think it's going to be great. Black Girl Hockey Club has been, I call it the balm. Uh, Black Girl Hockey Club is something that came along at a time where I was trying to decide if I was going to stay in hockey. Um, but, uh, I having other women in particular, melanated women and the folks that love us, um, has been such a joy. And there've been times where it's really difficult to be in this space and I'm kind of a personality in this space. So sometimes I get a little more attention than I'm used to in like my everyday life. Um, and it can be hard because for anyone who follows me personally on social media, you know that I'm always up to um, have a conversation and to get uncomfortable and make other people uncomfortable. Anyway, um, I could go on and on about Black Girl Hockey Club, but all that to say, if you are in the area, so um, if you're going to be at Climate Pledge Arena, if you're going to be on Saturday, and we'll talk about that game tomorrow, um, if you're going to be um, at the Kraken Community Iceplex Friday evening, I highly recommend that you check out Black Girl Hockey Club, and you can tell them I sent you. The show that you listen to Locked on Kraken. Your host, Erica Lindsay Ayala. I bet they'll really enjoy it. As, as I said, I have something else coming up at the end of the month with Black Girl Hockey Club. So, yeah, they're fam. Go check them out. There's new merch. I'm like, Seattle, y'all are trying to make me go broke. Um, 
They're going to have new merch. They always sell it. Uh, I think they're doing a pre-sale actually this time. So I can probably s grab some online, but they like, you know, y'all yeah, do that thing where you only sell it in Seattle and I haven't made my way out there yet. Next month is the plan. Anyway. Uh, yeah. So do that. Also another friend of mine is, you should roll through to the cracking community iceplex because Kimberly Sass, former metropolitan riveter now with the PWHPA, um, a board member of the PWHPA. She's an architectural designer at HLWNYC, although she's working remotely now from Buffalo, which is where she's originally from, but she has a fantastic, I haven't seen it in person, but I remember Kim starting this project. Um, that's not like I've known her for a few years, but uh, she has an art show entitled Behind the Front. And it goes into some of the highs and lows of being a woman's hockey player. Um, you know, a, a hockey player in women's hockey, I should say. Uh, and <laughs> This is an interesting time to talk about that because if you are on social media and you follow me or other people in women's hockey, you know that there are these breaking news reports that the NHL is bringing the PWHPA and the PHF to the table to talk about the future of women's hockey and that there's all this funding and yada, yada, yada. I have many thoughts about that, which we can talk about, um, but the end result of there not being more growth and sustainability in hockey is in part, I think, what Kim Sass brings to her curated artwork. Um, there are installments, there are original paintings. She is a fantastic artist and someone, like I said, I've gotten to know over the years. And so I really hope that you stop over at the Cracking Community Iceplex um, as her exhibit will be hosted at Kraken Community Iceplex in partnership with, of course, the Seattle Kraken and Starbucks. And she will be there from, and the exhibit will be there from March 18th through 21st. Um, this is what Kim Sass says in the article that's up on the Seattle Kraken website. The whole show aims to spark a needed conversation about what it takes for true equity in the sport. The exhibit uses art to question what women players go through. One example is we had to pay for our championship rings. No one knows that. Um, so yeah, I think it's really interesting. Um, you know, and I think, I think she's right in saying that maybe not no one, but a lot of people don't know the struggles of women's hockey players. And that's because a lot of media don't cover women's hockey. Um, so that's really interesting. Anyway, uh, I mentioned the power panel, Women of Hockey, that will be presented also by Starbucks and, of course, the Seattle Kraken at the Kraken Community Iceplex. That's Friday, March 18th, 7 p.m. local time. And it will include Alex Mandricki, Director of Strategy and Research for Kraken Hockey Operations, Renee Hess, Founder of Black Girl Hockey Club, Fiona McKenna, Business Intelligence Analyst, and Kendall Tyson, Vice President of Strategy and Business Intelligence for the Seattle Kraken. So chock full of Kraken folks and Renee Hess there as well. And there's going to be a skate. I'm so jealous. I haven't gone for a good skate in a while. Um, I'm jealous that y'all get to enjoy that. But all right. So the links are right there for you. Yeah, that's, that's our show. Tomorrow we will get you ready for Saturday's game day. Pew, 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 pew. We'll get you ready for that. I'm probably going to go over some of this again tomorrow. Get you ready for Black Girl Hockey Club. Make sure you're checking out Kim Sass and her art show. Maybe I'll get a little bit more into women's hockey because I definitely have thoughts. I didn't mention this at the top of the show, but the Seattle Kraken did not skate today. The practice was canceled, so for tomorrow's show, if they skate, which we are told that they are, we'll get you some notes and uh, clips from practice in preparation for Detroit coming up at Climate Pledge Arena. And then the Seattle Crack can go on the road once again, not too far, but still on the road 
Um, and so we'll get into that for next week. As always, hold fast, stay true, and oh, baby, let's see when, if, if, when, when, how, where <laughs> our Captain Geo and others go. Stay tuned, hold fast, stay true. I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.